Well, hey, everybody. Mystery is back with you again. And this is our second video on Lesson 10.2, Evaluating Expression. So in the first video, I introduced you to the idea of what it means to evaluate an expression. And we went through and evaluated several expressions. So in this second video, we're just going to work through some practice problems from the assignment. So I'm going to turn over to the assignment right here, Guided Practice. By the way, this is on page 274 in the Math 6 HMH uh, textbook. All right, so here we go. Remember, evaluating an expression is finding the numerical value for that expression when you are given the numerical value for the variable. All right, so if we take a look at the first one, x minus 7. Remember, x could equal anything, but they told us x is 23. So we're going to use that process called substitution. We're going to put in 23 for x, and we get 23 minus 17. So the answer, sorry, 23 minus 7. So the answer is 16. All right. So if there's only one operation, you don't have to worry about the order to do it in. If there's more than one operation, then you have to follow the correct order of operations. So if you take a look right here at number three, we have one half w, which means one half times w plus two. So we have multiplication and we have addition. So we do have to remember that multiplication comes before addition. So I'm going to go ahead and put that in. And what that gives me is one half times one ninth plus two. All right, so I'm going to do the multiplication because remember order of uh, operations. Do what is inside the parentheses first, then do all exponents, then multiplication and division from left to right, and then addition and subtraction from left to right. So here we go. So a half times one ninth, I'm going to multiply straight across and I get one 18th because 2 times 9 is 18 plus 2. So the answer that I get is 2 and 1 18th. 2 and 1 18th. If we wanted an improper fraction for that answer, we could go 18 times 2, which would be 36 plus 1. So 37 over 18. And of course, we could take our calculator and we could divide. 37 divided by 18 because any time you want to change a uh, fraction into a decimal you can simply divide the numerator by the denominator and we would get this long repeating decimal so I don't really think there's a point to change it to a decimal so either 2 and 1 18 or 37 18 is how I would leave it usually if there's a fraction in the problem we leave our answer as a fraction. All right, this one right here, we've got 8 divided by t plus t squared. So I've got more than one location for which I need to plug in that 4. So I'm going to go 8 divided by, but instead of t, I'm going to put 4 plus t squared. Instead of t, I'm going to put 4. All right, now again, order of operations would tell us to do the exponents, then the division, then the addition. All right, so 4 squared, remember, that does not mean 4 times 2. It means 4 times itself. So that part right there, 4 times 4 is 16. Then I'm going to do 8 divided by 4 is 2. And then finally, since I did the exponents and I did the division, now I'm going to do the addition and I get 18. All right. Okay, now over here, now they've introduced us with more than one variable. It's the same idea. It's just we're plugging in more than one unknown. All right, so 3a, remember that means 3 times a. So that's going to be 3 times 4 minus, and then b is equal to 6. And remember, order of operations, multiplication comes before subtraction. So I get 12 take away 6, which is Six. All right, this one right here, I'm going to plug in Z. We're back to just one variable. We have 5 times 6.2 plus 3.8. All right, now remember, when you have parentheses, you're going to do what's inside the parentheses first. This number next to the parentheses means to multiply, but we're going to do what's inside the parentheses. So what do we get? We get 5 times, well, 6.2 plus 3.8. How convenient is that? That 2 and that 8 makes 10, right? So this actually becomes 6 plus 
4, which is 10, and 5 times 10, let me rewrite that, 5 times 10 is going to give us 50. All right, finally, this last one I'm going to do here, 5m. Again, that means 5 times m. All right, so that's going to be 5 times 3 minus 3 squared. Okay, going back to order of operations, I've got exponents. All right, so that's going to be minus 9. Then I'm going to do my multiplication, and that's 15. And then 15 take away 9 is going to give me 6. All right, so that was the process of evaluating expressions, which means you substitute the value of the variable in for the variable. Then you follow the correct order of operations to find the numerical value of the expression. All right, now we're going to work through some different word problems that go along with this lesson. All right, so here we go. It says the table shows prices for Bella's games, Bella's soccer league. All right, her parents and her grandmother attended a soccer game. How much did they spend if they went together in one car? All right, so they gave us some step-by-step -step instructions here. It says write an expression that represents the cost of one car full of non-student soccer fans. Use X as the number of people who rode in the car and attended the game. All right, so these are non-students. So non-students are $12. All right, so for every non-student that attended, it's $12. So 12X, because it says X is the number of people. So X number of people times 12, but they also have to pay what? They also have to pay that $5 for parking. So 12X plus 5, there is our expression. Okay, $12 for every person. We don't know how many people and add five. Now there are three attendees, right? It says her parents, so that's two, and her grandmother, that's one more, so that's three. So now we're going to put in three for that X, so 12 times three plus five. Following the correct order of operations, we're going to multiply before we add. So we get 36 plus five and 36 plus 40 excuse me 36 plus 5 is 41 so the family spent 41 dollars so the key thing here was we knew that there were three non-student tickets so that part came out to 3 times 12 right and then we had to add i should not use i should not use an x for multiplication all right 3 times 12 and then we had to add 5 for parking all right so that's what we did for that problem all right so i'm going to skip over to the next page actually all right here we go it says the table shows ticket prices at movie 16 theater let a represent the number of adult tickets and c the number of children's tickets and s the number of senior citizen tickets write an expression for the total cost okay so every adult that n that that uh, 10, excuse me, is going to pay 875. So it's 875A plus every child that attends is going to spend 650. So 650C plus every senior that attends, it's going to be 650 as well. So 650. S. Okay, so there's our expression, 875 for every adult, 650 for every child, and 650 for every senior citizen. All right, it says the Andrews family bought, brought, brought, bought, two, <laughs> bought two adult tickets, three children tickets, and one senior ticket. All right, so I'm just going to go right below it. So we have 8.75 times 2 plus... 6.50 times 3 plus 6.50 times 1. Okay. By the way, it's okay to drop those zeros, especially when they look as sloppy as that one. It's also okay to use a calculator on this assignment. So I'm going to go ahead and do that to speed things up. 8.75 times 2 plus 6.50 times 3 plus 6.50 times 1. Kind of silly to multiply something by 1. And when we're done, we get 43. Now again, remember, this is money. So even though my calculator said 43.5, I'm going to put it like this. They spent, all right, 
and 50 cents. Remember, if you're writing a number, a money answer that's in dollars and cents, make sure you put that dollar sign at the front and go two decimal places. Two decimal places. All right. Okay, let's do this one. Number 11, the area of a square is given by x squared, where x is the length of one side. So when you have a square, if you want to know the area of a square, area is length times width, so we get x times x, which is x squared, which is why it's called squared, by the way, because that's the area of a square with side x, all right? Mary's original garden was in the shape of a square. She has decided to double the area of her garden. All right, so if her original, if her original is x squared, then her new, how do you double something? You multiply by two. So it's gonna be two times x squared or simply two x squared. All right, so the expression is two x squared. And then it says, evaluate the expression if the side length was 8 feet. All right, so her original one, her original one would have been 8 times 8, right? So her original one would have been 8 squared or 64. Now what are we going to have? Now we're going to have 2 times 8 squared. Remember, order of operations, do the exponents before the multiplication. That's going to give me 2 times 64 or 128. All right, 128 square feet. Okay, 128 feet squared. Let me try that again. There's an F, there's a T, there's a squared. All right, okay, I think a couple more and then we are going to be done with this uh, video. All right, so let's take a look at this expression right here. We have 6x minus x squared. And now they're giving us different values for x. Instead of just giving us one value and asking us to plug it in, they're giving us 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay, so first thing, 0 is the easiest number in math to work with. Now remember, order of operations, we have exponents and we have multiplication and we have subtraction. Exponents, multiplication and subtraction. We're gonna do the exponent, we're gonna do the multiplication, then we're gonna subtract. All right, so here we go. So zero squared, zero times zero is zero. Six times zero is zero, zero minus zero is zero. I'm liking that math. All right, here we go, one squared. One times one is one. Six times one is six. So this one becomes six minus one, which is five. All right, so let me actually write these down, okay? So for zero, it was six times zero minus zero squared, all right? For one, it's six times one minus one squared. Again, we did one squared is one, six times one is six, six minus one is five. For two, it's gonna be six times two minus two squared. That is a one, by the way, there. Sorry, that one really looked kind of funky. All right, so, uh, here we go. 2 squared is 4. 6 times 2 is 12. So 12 minus 4 is 8. All right. 3. 6 times 3 minus 3 squared. So here we go. 3 squared is 9, right? 6 times 3 is 18. 18 minus 9 is 9. All right. Then we have 4. 6 times 4 minus 4 squared. All right, so 4 squared is 16. 6 times 4 is 24. 24 minus 16 is 8. All righty. Okay, what about 5? So 5 is going to be 6 times 5 minus 5 squared. So again, we're going to do 25, right? 5 times 5 is 25. 6 times 5 is 30. And I get 5. And then when I do 6, look at that. They gave us the perfect amount of space. 6 times 6 minus 6 squared. I get, wow, 36 here. 36 here. I get 0. Describe any pattern that you see. 0, 5, 8, 9, 8, 5, Zero. Wow, that is really cool. All right. If I were to graph this, do you know what it would look like? It would look like this. And we actually call that a parabola, something you will be studying later on in your mathematical career. It's a parabola because it's 
going to be called a quadratic. A quadratic. All right. Okay. One last one. Where was it? Down here. This is the last one we're going to do. Number 15. The area of a triangle sale is given by the expression A equals one half BH. That's the formula for a triangle. One half base times height. One half base times height. So again, I have one half times B times h and what do they tell me they tell me that b is 12 one half times 12 times uh, h is 7 all right so here we go one half base times height now this is all multiplication so actually it doesn't matter what order we do it in because multiplication is commutative i'm just going to go from left to right half of 12 is 6 6 times 7 is 42 so we get 42 square inches all right so there we go that is a bunch of practice problems from lesson 10.2 in the sixth grade math book on evaluating expressions i hope this video was helpful for you as always if you need any more help or have any other questions of any kind don't hesitate to let me know have a great day everybody